Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker, and this is WP Water Cooler, episode number 208. Today's topic is how to organize your WordPress content. Let's go around the very small room today and get everyone introduced. George, how about you? Hi, I'm Say Reed. I love WordPress, teach WordPress, preach <laughs> WordPress, live WordPress. Say Reed, uh, you all the things. More or less. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. What about you, Sarah? Hi, I'm Sarah Weefald. I'm the production manager at Zeke Interactive, and I facilitate the OC WordPress design meetup. Nice. Good to have you. What about you, Steve? I'm Steve Zengit. I'm the founder of Zeke Interactive, and I run the OC WordPress meetup. Yep. So since Chris isn't here, you're not in jail right now, right? Chris is here. He's just not but, on. But you, so you're both in jail. That's what's happening. OK, yes. just want to make sure. Yeah, Steve, Steve has not been kidnapped for the record. <laughs> It's all he good. Wi -Fi. He found Wi-Fi and hopped on real quick. Kids have to force to smoke cigars and drink whiskey. I mean, uh, take me with you. <laughs> Twist my arm. <laughs> uh, so my name is Jason Tucker. You find me over at jasontucker.us. And um, I blog and do all sorts of fun things. So go check it out over at Jason Tucker on the Twitters. On all the things. So, on all the things. <laughs> All of the things. So today we're going to talk a little bit about organizing your content in WordPress and why you should do this. How you should maybe do a little bit of pre-planning before you um, before you jump in and you know get people to start linking to uh, to to tag URLs or to you know uh, category URLs or anything like that. And you know I the reason why I brought up you know this type of topic is because uh, you know I'm starting to see that if you don't do this you know pre-planning like I'm talking about you'll end up with a bunch of content that makes it really difficult for people to find, or you're assuming that they're going to find it using ways that, uh, you know, that you think are the right ways. So, I'm, just, I'm, I'm sorry, we have to plan something? Well, right, a little yeah, bit. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit. This, is not, this is not the right episode for me. I'm out. <laughs> and uh, somebody's phone's ringing. <laughs> it's Sarah. Sorry, I thought I had it all. Steve, quit calling Sarah. We're already right here. <laughs> I thought it was unmuted because it's all in my headphones. No, it's it, we're, we're hearing it as well. That's all right. Oh, I'm sorry. It's cool. So, um, you know, Steve doesn't blog except for once a year. So, what do you do when you when you blog, Steve? What's the uh, what's the way that you think about uh, setting up your your content so that way when you're tagging or categorizing that people will be able to find all 12 of your posts? I'm, I'm sorry. You're seriously starting with me on this. Question? Heck yeah, I'm starting this with you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You 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 represent the everyman in the in this uh, in this. Talk. <laughs> oh great! I'm, I'm, He's I'm, shaming I'm, you into blogging more, say, Steve. I'm, uh, all of a sudden, I'm Tom Hanks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, what about for your customers? What do, what are you guys uh, telling your customers when they're doing blogging and and being able to you know categorize their stuff? Well, you know, I think we need to take a step back uh, first, right? So. You know, part of the reason I like this topic, and when we were talking about this, was you know there's a couple of different ways to organize your content. Before we had custom post types, you had to have some sort of category or tag strategy, which still mm -hmm. exists, right? You don't necessarily need a custom post type to organize your content. That really should be only used for specific buckets, right? And and, and we'll talk about that. But um, nowadays, it's it's. The question is, do we do we need to go as far as a custom post type, uh, and 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 why? What's the purpose? That's what we think about when we're we're talking about um, uh, the content. Yeah, I mean, really, the end the end goal of all this is just findability. You want to make sure that what you write doesn't just get thrown into a black hole from which it never returns. You want what you write to actually get in front of people and or importantly, it gets in front of people when it's actually relevant to what they're looking at. So I mean, there's two main ways. I mean, there's the way where you can actually go through and link everything up yourself, spend a lot of manual time curating everything, or there's other ways where you can rely on automated systems that'll go through and try and guess what's close and what's similar to what. Now, I mean, some of these will be based off, of, like some of the local ones will be based off of, oh, what other posts share a category or share tags with this post. But there are other ones like um, uh, Elastic Press or the uh, related content module in Jetpack that will actually use latex semantic analysis to just like pull the keywords out of your content and then find other stuff that's similar to those on your blog and just link them back and forth at the bottom of your posts, which is a great way to just make sure the reader finishes one post and goes, hey, that was awesome. This looks relevant to what I'm interested in. I'm just going to keep reading on to the next one. 
See, yeah. and that's where I was talking about with, you know, kind of doing a little bit of this planning because just like what Steve was saying is that you could do a custom post type, you could do just a category, just a tag. But the, you know, the, the way in which the hierarchy of all this stuff goes is you have a post, regardless if it's a custom post type or a post, and then you have these two different, you know, these two different ones of either a tag or a category. And, you know, some people are wondering like, why should I use tags? Why should I use categories? Am I using both? Are they one and the same? Like what, what's the approach there? And, and there's there's uh, there's one other type uh, or, or way to, to segment the content, which is um, I, I, it's escaping me now. What's the, what's it called? Where you can select whether it's uh, video or quote post format. Post, post format, format. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So there's post formats as well. Right. Which goes and, off of that tag or or which goes off of that post, either a custom post or a post. Exactly. Exactly. I'm sorry. What was the question? Oh, the question was what the difference between a tag and a category is. And the yeah, main yeah. difference being, I mean, if folks use both of them and you can use them as much as or little as you want to. You could use only one if you want. But the main gist is that categories are hierarchical. Uh, hierarchical basically in this case meaning that you can have, like, uh, if you're doing a travel blog, you could tag or you could, sorry, use categories for I'm going to put this post in, uh, I'm writing this from New York City. So I'll put it in a New York City category, which is under a New York State category, which is under a United States category, which is under a North America category. So someone could then drill down or drill back as far as they want to and say, show me all posts that were tagged United States or show me all posts that were tagged uh, New York State. And they'll be able to find it no matter which actual category you've tagged it in, they'll be able to find it because it just chases down the hierarchy. Right. So, ca ca and just to sum this up again, categories are hierarchical, tags are not. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and it, you know, and that's where you know, it, when people are building out these posts, they're trying, you know, they're trying to figure out, hey, should I be putting these in tags or, or categories? And what if they start putting it in tags, and later on, they're like, oh, maybe I should have put that in a category. And I've I've always, and this might not be uh, correct uh, in all situations, but we've always told our, our clients that categories are for sort of major buckets, right? And we really only have a handful of categories on any given website. Tags, you can have as many as you want, right? So so some mm -hmm. some sites might have a couple hundred tags. I've had sites with ten thousand tags, that, so those can get unwieldy. But tags are more for um, just kind of a general idea of what's in the content. At least that's how we direct our clients. Categories are the main zones that you're actually planning to create content for. Mm -hmm. Tags are incidentally. I mean, if you have a category with only one post in it, it would be a kind of silly category. But if you have a tag that only maps to one post, eh, who cares? That's no big deal. Likewise, you know, I get questions from people sometimes asking about, you know, well, can I put more than one category on a post? And I feel like at that point, if you're asking about if you can put more than one category on something, you're really talking about a tag. Good way to sum it up. Uh, yeah. Even though now in WordPress, you can specify which one's going to be the primary, you know, tag or category that that post is going to have, right? Yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I, I think that's a bit silly. I mean, there's yeah, a lot of fun yeah. stuff you can do on the front end to try and find the right posts. Like you can, when constructing URLs, uh, then you're, it's like mysite.com slash category slash whatever the category slug is. You can also write it where uh, mysite.com slash category slash uh, horses plus cats. Uh, and then that'll actually find uh, any posts that are categorized in both the horses and the cats categories. That is the post I want to read. <laughs> hey, I've seen plenty of horses that are ridden by cats. <laughs> hey, it's a question of whether you'd rather fight one horse-sized cat or a hundred cat-sized horses. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Oh boy! Oh wow! I don't know. I mean, I'm also I'm also personally not a fan of having slash category in your URL of any at, at any point, but that's me. So moving on to to custom post types, you know, where where, where I typically introduce a custom post type is something that's going to have uh, a, a a real specific set of functionality for that that type of content, right? If it's if it's a a, a post. And then a post is kind of slightly different than that post. You might not need a custom post type. You could do that with uh, a different type of template. 
Um, but a custom post type to me has a specific set of functionality uh, for that post type. Um, and it, and it, it does need to be real, real distinct because I've seen sites that have, have 10 custom post types and that gets unwieldy fast. Or themes that have them baked into it and you're just like, oh, oh my gosh, plugins. why do you have so many of these in here? Or plugins. I literally, I, I, inherited, uh, I inherited a site a few years back that had 15 custom post types. Wow. That makes for a long nav, uh, left-hand I mean, nav bar. If you're going to find that many custom post types, presumably they're going to be related to one another, at which point you just disable the admin UI for them and create your own admin UI to actually make it slightly intelligible. Because really, who wants to have to scroll down that far every time you want to get to the settings menu? Right. But, but every one of those slider plugins that I installed has its own custom post type, so I need 15 of them. I mean, that's how you make the website work, right? You are dead to no. me, Jason. No, no, no. <laughs> no, Jason, that was sarcasm for our audience that doesn't know. That was half like, sarcasm. 15, I only have 14. Where's the 15th one? I need to install that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, um, a, 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 an example of a custom post type might be um, video, right? So if you've got, or, or let, let's say uh, there's a, a real estate site that we built. So a, a custom post type, something that makes sense for a custom post type is listing. Like a, a, a specific uh, post that is going to be about a property listing, and it's got all of the the information that goes into a listing. That to me is a good uh, candidate for a custom post type. Sure. I, I but if you're just it. doing a, but if you're just doing a food blog, and you want to share some recipes, you could just do a short code for recipes on your normal blog posts. Uh, and this also can be done for commerce. Um, so some things like. Cart 66, for example, while they do uh, have a custom site for products, that doesn't create its own front end page for the user. Those are just inserted into your blog posts, for example, instead of uh, creating an entire uh, URL hierarchy on your website for all your uh, products. Right. Where like yeah. WooCommerce, on the other hand, is 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 actually using those custom post types. Yeah. So it's it's a, a question of which is a better fit that. for the business. And, and part of the reason I retracted my earlier statement about video is because video is a post format, right? So you, it's already built into WordPress. If you want, if you just have a post that is a video post, use a post format. It's built in, and you can build a template that is specific to that post format. Well, uh, if you video. want extra content to go with it, you could just use the attachment page. Yep, you could. <laughs> Which now we're getting into post meta and all those. Sorts of things. No, that's good. I mean, that was that was sort of the point of this episode. It's so yeah. meta, dude. And now, as say isn't here, I feel like I'm obliged to complain on her behalf. The core does not allow categories for media items. Uh, <laughs> now that that is said, we can move on. <laughs> Thank you. Say. <laughs> Well, expand on that a little bit, George. So, so uh, I, I just, for any frequent watchers, it's been discussed ad nauseum in the past. But the basic idea being, um, it's relatively trivial to add, but you need to plug in or like three lines of code to do it. To let, like, if you're doing a large site that has thousands of media items, you may want to be able to organize your media items so you can like drop all your clip art into one folder, all your personal photos into one folder. You said clip um, art. Well, or stock photography or whatever you happen to use. Uh, don't hate on the 90s, bro. Um, and <laughs> being able to yeah, more easily stuff. find the bits you're looking for as opposed to having everything dropped in one bucket and relying on, okay, crap, who uploaded this? What post was it attached to? Can I even find it? And then you wind up uploading more copies than you really need. Yeah, yeah, and I, I've, I've started to look into this. I mean, that's why we talked about this a couple of episodes ago, is uh, dealing with um, dealing with categories within uh, within uh, media, you know, files and stuff, and dealing with that in the library. It's like that's an important thing for people to be able to find that content and find it easily, and especially it's something that you can't really search for. So, it just makes it a lot easier to just look at it from a, from a, from a category standpoint. So uh, it was mentioned earlier in the episode that um, there is a way to set your permalinks. Um, so if you are if you are using categories the way we described earlier, mm -hmm. set your permalink so that the category appears in the permalink. That happens automatically with a custom post type, right? And so if you have a custom post type that is event or real estate listing, that's going to show up in the permalink, which 
I'm not an SEO expert. I never claim to be one, but that that should make for better SEO. I asked the witch doctor. He told me what to do. To <laughs> and there's also that that famous checkbox in uh, Yoast SEO where it'll actually turn that off for you if you don't want to do any Cody type stuff to do it. But you know, it's, now, it's something you can do. One other point: if you are someone who's been using WordPress for a very long time, and we love you for sticking with us from the beginning, but if you look in your URLs and they look something like mysite.com slash question mark post ID equals 538, <laughs> please, please, please switch to at the very least the almost pretty permalinks where it's like slash index.php slash about us. Um, or Why, if you, well, the almost pretty permalinks, uh, the most important thing about search engine optimization is not optimizing for search engines, but is optimizing for your users so they can oh. find and recognize and understand and share your content. So it should be more like social engine optimization. Aha! Uh, jazz hands. Um, <laughs> but the really cool thing is WordPress is built to understand different requests for your content. So if you're not taking advantage of URLs that can make sense to a user, or make sense to someone who's clicking on it to have an idea of what they're clicking on, you're really going to lose out, and fewer folks are going to risk clicking on something that's like post ID equals 938. Why do I even care about that? Versus uh, mysite.com slash why you Horses should care cats. about this dot whatever. So, and, and, and cat the, horse, one thing, cat horse. The, the one thing you want to be careful about there. Now, the, the situation you described doesn't cause this, but you want to be careful about link rot, right? Mm -hmm. So if you if you switch your permalink structure, WordPress is going to take care of that for you, right? If your permalink is currently question mark ID or P equals, right, something, and you switch to a different permalink structure, you're fine. But when you do switch to something else, you want to be careful about link rot. You just want to make sure Google can find your stuff. And, and by, the link, best things? by link rot, do you mean creating 301 redirects for your old URLs so that the internet can find your new one? Yes. Okay. And I'm sure there are a couple of plugins that can do it marvelously, either through Google and Google Apps or Google Analytics integration, or just use your local database, but. It's worth occasionally installing something that will monitor for 404 pages on your site. Uh, so if someone pulls up your website and gets a 404 page because the content can't be found, it's nice to log that, see how, see how common that page gets pulled up, and then maybe add in a redirect to the where that content now lives or where you'd like to send them if that's something you don't have anymore. And there's a, this is a little bit more advanced, but something you should be familiar with. There's also a Google Search Console, which used to be called Google mm -hmm. Webmaster Tools, which will um, tell you a lot of if you're having this link rot problem uh, as well. Again, a little, a little bit off topic, but uh, but since Say's not here, we had to go off topic some point, <laughs> just in honor of. But, but really, the sure. whole point, of, like I said <laughs> earlier, the whole point of what we're talking about today is how to make your content findable. Mm -hmm. And if someone's pulling up a 404 page, your content is not findable. So it needs a little bit of love to get it back in front of the eyes of your users. Good information. Yeah, which is, it's, it's scary for folks when they're looking at the Google Search Console. They're like, oh, no, Google already knows that these pages aren't working. Now what am I supposed to do? And, you know, it's, it, it freaks them out. It can be daunting. At first glance, it can be daunting. Don't just take a breath, uh, but it is important. Yeah, and that's when you roll in with uh, some regular expression and uh, some HT access rules. No, <laughs> right, yeah. like those sorts of yeah, things. All you need, there's a there's a plugin that's very simply called redirection. Need to to manage. What could that possibly be? So let's go back to so let's go back to the things oh, that's we talked about. Talk, Sorry, yeah, we talked about uh, categories, tags, post formats, custom post types. Um, I'm going to get a little bit developery for a second because each of these things um, you have the ability in the template hierarchy to create uh, custom template pages that match uh, categories, tags, post formats, custom post types, so that you can control the look of the template based on you know, how your content is organized. That's all. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> There's no question there. It's just a statement. Yeah, like if you've got 
a category that you blog about movies on and you really wanted to, you could create a uh, category-movies.php template in your theme uh, and then like add some little film dangling down the sides of the post just because the post happens to be in the categories. Well, the and, movies and, category. and one thing you can also do is you can you can have custom archive pages, right? So those mm -hmm. category archive pages themselves, if you have one that is movies, you could have something special on that yeah. on that archive page, which which makes things really cool and flexible. Yeah, in the show notes, I'll have the link to the um, the uh, the template hierarchy, uh, kind of that whole uh, roadmap there, how that's set up, and how you can kind of interact with it and see what's the best way to to build those pages out. Well, and, and so we are talking about organizing your content. You know, WordPress already has built in many, many different ways to view an archive page. Category tag, author is a very interesting one, right? So, it, you know, this this is kind of a tricky one, but but you can make an author profile for you that shows a little bio of, of, of an author on your on your site with a, a wrap up of their content. You have full control over what goes on that you know that author page. Which again, just another way of organizing your content. If if I'm on a say a news site and I'm I'm I want to follow a particular author, I can just go right to his or her page, which then outputs all of the posts that they've ever written on that particular blog, which is huge for that author because that author may be the one that's going to uh, send traffic your way just by telling them, hey, here's this page that you can uh, see all of my content that I've written on. Mm -hmm. Used to be a huge thing for like uh, I don't want to say a dirty word here or anything, but uh, Google Plus was like that was like a huge thing for them as having. Sorry, I'm not familiar pages. with this. I'm not familiar <laughs> with this Google Plus. Yeah, I know. Double that Plus, is. good. What? No, that's not it. <laughs> but they're important pages to have, and it, it's there's a bunch of ways to do it, but being able to do it using just built-in templates and just crafting those things up um, works really well. Uh, so another thing to consider is, oh, the word's escaping me, but uh, Sitemap. Uh, Jetpack mm -hmm. can create a Sitemap for you. There's a lot of other plugins that can create Sitemaps for you. Um, or you can create one manually yourself if you really hate yourself that much, but hey, I'm not one to judge. Um, so Sitemaps are a way of basically categorizing and creating a, like an XML structure that search engines and other things can parse. They'll basically look at it, and it'll map out all the content on your site. Uh, so they can use that to then see what there is they may care about they may not be aware of exists because maybe you forgot to add the page to your admin menu or um, they're just stumbling around blindly and they're, oh, hey, this looks interesting. I'm going to go follow that down a rabbit hole for five minutes. Not that I know anything about going down rabbit holes, but I think you get the idea at this point. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So we meta for attachments, posts, I guess pages is is um, something that that you wouldn't really do any categorization for, but I could see people maybe wanting to do something like that. I, pages are definitely I mean, kind of a standalone. And really, what's so? What's the difference, Jason? You can tell us what's the difference between posts and pages. Uh, posts and pages. Well, what? Go for it, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually posts are date based uh, content. Yep. Pages are pages are static, right? Pages are also hierarchical. Uh, posts are not, right? And you have to take this into account when you're creating a custom post type because you need to, to know you you tell a custom post type whether you're going to model posts and pages, meaning posts or pages, meaning whether or not it's going to be hierarchical, and that's important, right? That yeah. adding that hierarchical element actually can add some database uh, overhead. Yeah, if you're trying to build like a, a wiki page for your, you know, for your organization or something, you wouldn't want a hierarchical setup, or you would want for that, but you wouldn't want it to be date based. So it's like, it, depending on how you're going to model it, you need to look at this as this, is this a post or is this a page? Like, like right. Just, you know, and the way model. I exp the way I explain it to our clients is is pages are evergreen, uh, posts are date based. So posts is going to be anything mm -hmm. that is news, uh, press releases, uh, anything with a date attached to it. Right. And right. if you're building a wiki, you can have parent pages to things as well. So you can kind of create a, a sort of hierarchy, but it's still evergreen content that's not subject to change based on date. Yep. Yep. And you wouldn't want to so have those dates in there. So, so if we were writing content about Lancaster, Pennsylvania, I may put that as a hierarchical post type 
underneath uh, Pennsylvania Dutch country, underneath uh, Pennsylvania, underneath the Northeast, underneath the United States. Uh, again, and this would let you bubble things up so you can say, okay, this is the parent page. I'm going to click back up with like a breadcrumb menu or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those yeah. categories are going to have their own archives as well. So being able to look mm -hmm. at, you know, the United States, you know, in your in what you were talking about, George, uh, just look at the United States, you see all the other posts that relate to the United States. Another way to do that uh, that's kind of related, and this is a little bit more advanced, but we didn't touch on this yet, is we talked about custom post types, but we didn't talk about custom taxonomies, right? So we've really only talked about categories and tags, but that taxonomy uh, is extendable, right? So in George's case, you could make a taxonomy called location, right? And you could make it hierarchical, so all those things could just belong under a taxonomy. Yeah. Um, and that's a way you to make a high, your content. You can make a flat-based kind of like uh, tags taxonomy called emotions. And I can write, I'm angry when I'm writing this post, or I'm happy when I'm writing this post. And then you can, someone can go and say, show me all the posts where George is happy, and they'll come up with like zero. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're taking horses me back to my live journal days. Oh, ho horses <laughs> and cats, is it going to be a happy post? That, that sounds pretty happy to me. That's terrifying, man. That's <laughs> file under scared. <laughs> A horse-sized cat. Do you know how big horses are? I do, yeah. I mean, a lion ain't that big. <laughs> you'd have they to have walk those... around that thing that's laying down on the ground. Come have on. Been, have you been to solving? They have those mini horses, those little... Yeah, I'd be into a cat-sized horse. Uh, <laughs> they, they, You know, they actually train them to assist blind people who are allergic to dogs. Cat-sized horses? And and they wear sneakers. Well, they're not cat-sized, but... <laughs> no, but they're small, and they wear sneakers. Yeah. I don't... Is that true? Sarah, do you want yeah. a pony? I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's true. Steve, I will, I will send you photos. <laughs> <laughs> I think they Steve might be... Sarah wants a pony for a birthday. I think, they might, I think they might be photoshopped. No, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, spent a lot of, I spent a lot of time at 2 in the morning researching this, Steve. Oh, sure. <laughs> so there's Steve cross going on there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, oh, man. All right. That's all I got, man. <laughs> I, think, I'm, I'm, I think we... I think I'm, I'm out of information. No, I think we I think we pretty much uh, exhausted this uh, this topic here. Um, so wait, wait, is this an, is this the episode where we actually got some things accomplished? Is this that episode? Dream I think so. Team right here, dream team. <laughs> it only took two hundred eight episodes, but we we probably finished before before our time was up. That's awesome. I think the four of us need to start a splinter podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna fork this baby. <laughs> And call it two under because we're wow. two minutes under. <laughs> two minutes oh, under, exactly. Well, cool. Let's wrap it up. How about that? So That's you can go over to our website at wpwarco.com. You can click on the links there to subscribe. If you like this particular episode, hit the thumbs up button. We'd really appreciate it. Um, leave a comment if you have a comment. Um, you can leave a comment both on our website or over at WP Water Cooler's YouTube channel. We would Jason, appreciate that very much. Jason, that, that image that Sarah just put in the chat, make sure that goes into the show notes because that is <laughs> scary. That is scary. If I see one of those, I'm, I'm going to run the other way. Yeah. And, and we'll for those sure of you happens. at home, yeah, for those of you at home, it's a horse wearing sneakers because I don't lie. You don't. You don't lie. <laughs> That's an assistant animal. <laughs> That's awesome. Are you allowed to pet oh, them when on duty? No, he's working. If he's wearing his working vest, you can't pet him. Uh, you know what? But dude, look at his look at his eyes. He 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 does not look very happy I'm, doing that job. I'm, I'm I'm gonna get a working vest for when I'm at Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, Steve. No one would want to pet you anyway. <laughs> hey, yeah. especially if I'm wearing my working vest. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, as long as you get one of, those, one of those leashes. That's all I got. This just got weird. We are, we are, we're actually two minutes over at this point. Yeah, Wait, gotta go, guys. Got weird? All right, folks, see you later. Uh.